Good boys and girls, this is Professor Nelson of Electronics. Today we will learn how to make an electromagnetic lock, like the one you're seeing, this one here. Let's see how to do it step by step. Well, let's get started. Very good guys. To be able to make our electromagnetic lock, we need a fluorescent light bulb like this one. Since these bulbs have several electronic components inside, and among all these, it is the coil that interests us. For this, the first thing we must do is remove the top cover. Well, let's get started. Very good, now we are going to remove the cover. For this, you must use a flat screwdriver, the flattest and thinnest they have, and they begin to leverage the slot it has. Then they take it out. And here we have the electronic card. From here, what matters most to us would be this component here, which is a coil. Keep in mind that the higher the power of your light bulb, the coil will be larger. Now we are going to remove the coil from the electronic board using the soldering iron. Very well, we remove the coil. Well, we now have our coil. Now we are going to remove the red tape that comes around the coil. And then we will remove the ferrite core. For that they will have to use something sharp. First we will remove the red tape. Very good. Now we have the coil. Let's move on to the tests. Now for the test, we are going to control the current. Your multimeter on current. In current at 10 amperes. Be very careful with that. Since we are going to test how much current passes through the coil. In this case, we will apply 12 volts of direct current. Pay attention to what the multimeter says. We energize the coil and we have one ampere of current. We test again, and we have almost one ampere. So be very careful. If the coil reads six, three ohms, or much less, there they might have problems, since the coil could get too hot. Now the metal core has to be able to enter the core of the hole in the coil. First, I wanted to use this screw but it is very big and thick. So I think it's a lot for this project. Maybe we can use it for another project. So instead, I decided to use something that can be found in homes or hardware stores. How to be these steel nails. We have one with a smaller diameter and another with a larger diameter. Let's try both and see what happens. First, let's try the smallest one. Okay, we energize the coil. They saw. It moves it. Well, this way you can see it much better. We energize the coil and see what happens. There you can see that it is doing its job. As you can see, almost all the metal is below. The electromagnet will try to raise the nail to half its length. But since he doesn't have much strength, he won't be able to raise it completely. Now let's try the largest nail. Since this one has more weight, it will cost more to move it.
They see how it costs him. He tries, but he can't. And that is a small problem that I had. Now how do I solve this problem? Well, because this nail is heavier. And even worse, it will have to be horizontal. And then friction will also be generated. And since this coil does not have enough strength, which is an inconvenience. What you could do is look for other coils of these. Maybe bigger. Since the larger the bulb, the larger its coil will be. So I could use those coils, but they would consume more current. But I was thinking, and I do use neodymium magnets. That is, if I put it on the metal nail, I will be able to make the metal nail become magnetic. That is, the metal nail will have a magnetic field. If we put it there and do the same test again. Let's see what happens. No problem. We turn the magnet over. Remember that magnets have north and south poles. They saw that. See, it has more strength. He practically picks it up. Imagine this nail is really heavy. Still, I wonder if it's strong enough to bend a spring. However, we still have the option of the smaller metal nail. In the case of the smallest metal nail, we can do the same. Place the magnet on it. Obviously, the magnet is not going to be on the top. Otherwise, it would have to be at the bottom, since the upper part is what has to hook or secure the door. Now, if we put the magnet on the small nail, see how he lifts. Let's see one more time. See, it reaches halfway. Incredible how it wants to fly. This is how our bolt will work. But to try to improve the results, we will design a core with the exact hole for the diameter of the smallest nail. Since this one is giving me better results than the larger nail, the big one turns out to be more complicated, in this case due to weight. So I'm going to make a custom shell or core for the nail which would give us a more efficient coil. So, taking advantage of the 3D printer, we are going to make the casing for this one. And along the way, we increase the length of the coil a little, just a little longer. Let's move on to the design. Well guys, here we have our printed piece, where we are going to wrap the coil. We are going to put it to the nail, to be able to start the laps. And we place it on our drill.
Very good. We now have our coil. Now we will put some adhesive tape on it so that the coil does not come apart. Okay guys, now that we have our coil finished, it's time to try it. For that we will try it with our metal nail. We place it and see if we have the same result as before. We energize. Keep in mind that it is without the magnet. All good. Now we place the magnet. And we try. There you have it. It is the same result that we had with the original coil. Now the test went well. We are going to add a box in which we will put our coil. Alright guys, here we have our box, or rather the pieces to assemble the electric lock. Our coil now has two fixed wires which are positive and negative. Then we have a base where the coil will be placed. Then we have the cover of said base. And then our metal nail. We also have a metal spring. The spring should be the thinnest one they can find. It should not be very thick, otherwise our electromagnet will be useless. We also have insurance. I will immediately tell you where to put it. And finally our neodymium magnet. Well, let's move on to assembling our lock. The first thing will be to place our electromagnet on the base. It has to come under pressure. Now we place the nail, along with the metal spring. Now we will place the insurance. The safety will be placed so that it pushes the shaft. Since at this moment the axis is free and moves on its own, he has nothing to push him. Therefore, we will glue the insurance right on the axis here. Right on the edge, so that when we move the shaft it presses the spring halfway. So what we will do is mark where the safety will go. For that we use a permanent marker. And right at the mark we place our insurance and then we glue it. Very good guys once the glue of our insurance has dried. We place the coil next to the axis at the base. And we see if there is no jam problem. Ready, we tried it and everything was fine. We do a test. We energize the coil with a 12 volt source of more than one ampere. It's very good. The test went well. Now we put the lid on. And we glue it. Well guys, this is how our electromagnetic lock would look like. See it looks very pretty. We even have the holes to screw it in and be able to use it in a project. This is nothing more than a prototype, but it works. Then we will see how to make another much more powerful one. So let's try how it works. Okay guys that's all, and if you like the video, 
A like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.